right, which is a very different area, so that's one thing. And the second thing that I wanted to put on the table is that we've been talking about this in a very sort of academic way, but having seen the film, there is clearly a profound ethical issue. Right. Right? And somebody who doesn't believe in exorcisms is going to say performing exorcisms is fundamentally evil. Right? And somebody who does believe that in them will say it's fundamentally evil not to perform them. Right? So I was hoping for some kind of input on that kind of fundamental ethical issue here also. We'll take a couple of questions and then come back to the one here. There was another here first. My question is to Mr. Bohodiak. It seems to me that we almost, almost never hear about exorcisms on uh, atheists. So how come becoming an atheist makes you stronger than the devil? A practical engineering question for Dr. Bokoviak. Uh, oh, uh, these uh, materials screw. Why are they retort or metric? Sorry, I don't understand quite the question. Uh, screws. Yeah. Were they retort screws or metric screws? <laughs> metric or... And from what uh, body aperture they were produced often? Quite worth this. Uh, this is very important for a better industry. How to produce better Japanese <laughs> goods. This is a professor. This is a question for Professor Rappenberg. Uh, I was wondering whether you could uh, consider a uh, position, a form of memes infection, very bad memes infection. Because um, I remember you writing about people who had NDE, and um, NDEs from all parts of the world um, contain uh, religious imagery, imagery uh, that comes from these parts of the world. And uh, what about people? Is there a form of possession um, of people who have no religious background, like no church going, no religious education, and so on? So I think the, the, what I was watching this movie looked like really bad means infection for them. Okay, so who would like to start uh, answering? Uh, Maybe I will. Can I? Uh, so I would like to comment on this atheist case, uh, because this is not the first question uh, like that. And this is actually not true. And this is uh, what I know from an exorcist, that uh, there was, uh, there was uh, uh, a guy, a boy that came, and he was uh, atheist. And uh, the next week uh, he came and he was not an atheist anymore. So it is not true that uh, atheists cannot be uh, cannot be tormented or possessed by the devil. This is the knowledge from the exorcist. So. What about the Daniels? Almost never happens. And uh, where do you know, know this from? Mm, good point. Or this is this is just uh, in your uh, your opinion, right? So. No, no, but, but the, okay, but the point is that this is not true, at least this is the knowledge from the exorcist, but do you have any other knowledge, or this is your just opinion from the air? Ah, you never, yeah, you never heard about this, but I think you never heard about many things, so, you know, this is not actually the argumentation. The, the correct one. We also had a question about the ethics, so maybe somebody Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that one to say something about both the morality of ethics and the, the whole mean question. Um, when you were talking there about near-death experiences, I, um, I haven't really thought about it this way, but of course I would agree with you. Uh, all over the world people are having experiences of tunnels with the light at the end, they have experiences of uh, out-of-body experiences I'll be talking about tomorrow. There's a lot of commonalities, but if they get even further into the experience, you get to the stage where um, the experiences are coloured by their religion. So Christians mm -hmm. will see angels and St. Peter and so on, and uh, Hindus will see the Ramblings, and it really depends on, on your religion. And now, is there a similarity here? Yes, in this, in this terrible situation, I was thinking that my own daughter, she's now 35 and she's extremely well, she writes a really interesting blog about um, 
uh, uh, eating disorders, and I, I kept thinking about her and all the other people that I've known of teenage girls who've had terrible problems. These girls are obviously in a horrendous situation, and yes, I hadn't thought about it in mean terms, I should have, girl, um, but that's what's happening. You have a, a, a child who is oppressed by a religious family, by these awful religious memes that trap people with threats and promises and so on, and they're trying to fight out. What do you do when you want to get out? You fight and scream and shout, and you know, it, at its worst. And that's what we saw happening, and I'm still feeling very, very upset. But thank you for your question. Maybe I will also call, comment on the, on the abuse. I, I'm not sure what you are thinking about that this is not ethically correct or uh, abusive because this is like if you have mentally ill people, then you also use force, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, okay. no, it depends, but it is allowed to use force. And the same is actually with the, with the people because they have such a uh, such a strength that it is uh, some people are needed to hold the person, so that's actually the explanation. And the same you have in psychiatry. Yes. I mean, just coming back to, to the question about the ethics of it, um, I mean, clearly, to actually, I mean, one of those poor women was tormented by her homosexual tendencies, yeah. and I think she'd been a much happier person if she just hadn't been brought up in an environment that told her that was evil. Right. As simple as that. Woo! scrutiny and asking for sources. The question number one is about your first sentence, I think, that you said in this panel. You said, I assume that devil has free will. My question is, why do you assume that? My second question is, what sort of information did you use to assume that the devil has free will? And if you tell me that you've seen I know I'm being presumptive here, but if you've seen people and cases and so on, um, I remember seeing a lot of cases of people dancing around fires to get rain, and many of them did. I still don't see this as a credible source of information. Thank you. Will you answer that question? <coughs> this is this is an assumption, or this is uh, this is this comes from the Catholic doctrine. So of course it is not uh, it is not scientifically proved, but this is the doctrine that every intelligent uh, being uh, uh, that was created by God has free will. So human beings and uh, angels as well. So this is uh, the, the explanation. I, I disagree with you. Hello. <coughs> I, have, I have a question for the same gentleman. Uh, through all of this, very interesting. Discussion, but I'm wondering if you've ever heard uh, that anecdotes and quotes are not evidence. <laughs> of, of, of course, they, they are not uh, evidence in a scientific way. This is why I say this quote because this is what I can uh, I can get let's say best. From the from the first hand, let's say from the from the exercise that perform. Okay, of course I agree that you don't need to believe it, right? But uh, as I said, such cases uh, there are many such cases. This is not a single case. And if you don't believe uh, if you don't believe everybody, then actually it's not rational. Okay, you can you can check this. You can ask the exercise or whatever you want. But if you don't believe uh, all the exercises, that is a little bit not rational, I think. And that in such cases uh, have been for, 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 for centuries actually. So this is not a single case. I think it's not rational not to believe or at least uh, give credit so that it is possible. So I think this is rational. And not just said, no, this is not possible because, uh, in my opinion, this is something uh, yeah, paranormal or something. So, like, uh, materialism is, uh, is right because it must be right. Yeah? So this is something like this. Why is it rational to go for the specifically Catholic version of 
or with a misbelief system, simply because you were born in an environment where you were raised as a Catholic. Do you think you'd have the same beliefs if you were born in a completely different country and not raised as a Catholic? Probably not. Right. But, but you see, of course. But, 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 this, is, but this, is the, this is the point. For example, if, uh, you're, uh, if you were born in another family, then probably you, you wouldn't be a scientist, right? So, but from this you cannot conclude that Catholicism is not true. Of course, I mean, this is, this is, that, this is that I'm lucky. I'm sorry. You're lucky, you're lucky that having an accident that you were born in a Catholic family means you have access to the truth, whereas the rest of the world doesn't. You're in your generations. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, Um, I think we come to the next question, please. Hello, I'm Susan. I wanted to know, I was, I was wondering if anybody else was as stunned as I was at the, the chance of abuse. We see these beautiful, young, vulnerable women in the hands of these men who, uh, writhing on the floor and being touched and held. And, and it just, to me, I just saw something maybe different than everybody else did. I saw the chance of abuse of these women being... Um, uh, trying, maybe even doing this, because, maybe acting out because they wanted sexual attention or they wanted to be, for, for who knows what reason, it may have nothing to do with mental illness, but I had the feeling overwhelmingly that these women were being um, sexualized or, uh, yeah. That's a good question, also I noticed myself that it's mainly girls. We haven't talked about that yet, but of course, I mean, everyone I was talking to about tea time is, is feeling that. But what other processes going on here? Mental illness is not some kind of thing like the flu. These all seem to be girls who had very difficult family situations, either oppressed by a Catholic upbringing or some other kind of, the way the daughter, the, the, the sister or the mother were ganging up on one girl. These are all things that can lead to different outcomes. They can lead to taking drugs to cope, they can lead to taking um, uh, uh, self-harm, uh, all of these different things, and they can lead to what, what is what we call mental illness if it takes certain forms. I was reminded, if this is, is relevant, I think it is in the sceptical context, of the women who became spiritualist mediums in the late 19th century. Because they also rolled around on the floor and screamed and made strange noises and also were, you know, collapsed into the arms of men and so on. And there is a theory, and this is perhaps all it is, I'm not sure, but that they were exactly as you have described. They were women in difficult situations, oppressed in a, a very male-dominated society. And the only way they could get attention of any kind, plus some touching and feeling and screaming and, you, you know, getting, just, I don't want to get out of here! Um, just, sorry, that no, just organization quickly, sorry. Uh, so we're supposed to end up kind of in one minute, but I think everyone's engaged. So is everyone okay with prolonging it for 15 minutes? Sure. Yes? Okay, great. Thank you. Just to add to that, and I agree entirely with what you both say, and the, uh, the thought that occurred to me when they were kicking and screaming and actually being very, very violent, that this was one way at least of letting off steam and getting, trying to do something to get rid of that kind of frustration they felt. And it reminded me very much of the kind of cases of possession back in the Middle Ages where it was typically kind of cloistered nuns who would, would kind of have the outbreaks of this kind of hysterical behaviour. It was one of the few ways that they could actually swear, kick, behave outrageously and it wasn't their fault. They didn't have responsibility for it. It was and sexually. Their fault. It was the demons that made them do it. Sexually. They could be sexual, uh, and it's not their fault. Absolutely, yeah. Um, um, my question is again to Marius, I'm sorry if you feel No problem. Um, <laughs> we have a very long discussion. So I can think, I can think of uh, quite a few different lines of evidence that would lead me to believe that possession is, is actually happening, as some of the things that Chris has suggested, for example. Can you think of anything that would convince you that possession, demonic, demonic possession and exorcism are not actually real? Oh, good question. It's difficult because from the scientific point of view, you cannot, uh, you cannot test this, you cannot prove it. So, uh, and, and the second thing is that, uh, as, I, as I have uh, shown this in the presentation, you have uh, many things that, in my opinion, maybe you have an explanation, do not have an explanation in the uh, materialistic or atheistic paradigm. 
So as I said, the languages, uh, the levitation, uh, the knowing of secret things, and uh, the uh, what, what was the fourth? Uh, for example, the test with the, with the holy water. So how how do you explain it? Can you can you yeah. think, because if yes. somebody is mentally ill doesn't have this knowledge. Anecdotes. No, as I said, I think uh, atheism is dogmatic because it's open only for the uh, material uh, explanations. And uh, I was a scientist for 10 years, so I opened for the natural, and first I, I searched for the natural uh, causes, but I also opened for the non-material, because I know what science is about, what are the assumptions in science, and to what can be tested and what not, because of the research tools. So I'm open, I'm open. Okay, uh, this has been touched, but I would like to ask this question to make it clear. Uh, and I was also asked this, I have my own explanation as well, but I would like to ask you. Why is it so that in Poland, exorcism is so popular, uh, our country is much more pious in a way, comparing, for instance, to the Czech Republic, not offending the Czech people. Uh, and, uh, for instance, in Germany, it's forbidden at all by the Catholic Church. So, how is it possible that the, the only country in Europe, except for Italy, but exorcism in Italy is practiced in a different way, why are we Polish people so prone to be possessed? <laughs> Yeah, okay, but, 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 but this, is, this, is, this is actually a, a, a good question. So, for example, in Germany, this is a taboo uh, subject, and the bishops uh, do not nominate the exorcists. So there are no exorcists there. So this is the explanation. And in Poland, in Poland, there are exorcists that are nominated, so there are. But uh, I will give you an example. If you kill all the doctors in one country, then it means that there are not, not any more sick people. <coughs> do, you, do you get the point? So, so in every country there are people that need help and would like to go to exorcism, exorcist, but they are not present. Yeah. So, you understand what I mean? No, I don't, because I understand that German bishops are nominated by the same Pope as Polish bishops. So that, that's he choose special kind of German people to become bishops, completely different from the Polish ones. And I don't understand the word taboo as you, you are using it. No, this is about the, the power of, um, of belief taking things over. It reminded me of an investigation I did in a poltergeist house in Bristol, where uh, it was because of the materialization of spitting out of, of um, uh, nails and, and screws and so on. In this house, uh, things were moving, and lamp shaders were moving, there were noises of things happening, keys uh, um, appeared in a strange place, and the inhabitants called it, and it's young girls, three teenage girls that could have been very easily similar to the girls in the film we saw, and they believed that Mr. Polti was doing all these things, and uh, oh, the television kept changing uh, channels with nobody there, and so on. And what happened gradually over many weeks as I kept going there was that I found normal explanations for all the different bits and pieces. Um, the television actually turned out the chain on the door was shaking and it switched the, this is a long time ago when they used um, ultrasound to, to switch channels. Um, the, uh, the, the, the clock on the mantelpiece that was moving turned out to be the spring inside the clock was unwinding. I mean, it doesn't matter what they were. But uh, for a long time, they just kept on believing, well, that wasn't going to still here. And at some point, it just went and the whole thing disappeared. So it was a combination of co coincidences of small things that can have this massive power of you imagining a, a, a thinking, living creature there. It wasn't a devil, but it was a frightening creature they were imagining. That's what came to my mind of watching some of this. Uh, and just sorry, sorry, just sorry, sorry. point to that. I, mean, I, mean, I think it's important not only to wherever you can directly test any kind of paranormal claim, but also, as Sue just described, to actually look at plausible and convincing mechanisms that could explain why people might believe, for example, that their house is haunted. And again, we do experiments like that, which show the power of suggestions, we've just seen demonstrated. But 
very, I mean, to give you one example, we did a study following on from some of Richard Wiseman's work, uh, where we replicated one of Richard's effects. Um, this was to show, uh, I mean, people sometimes believe that Uri Geller doesn't use sleight of hand, believe it or not. Um, and uh, but what, what's often claimed is that they know he didn't because they've seen him do it, and the key of the spoon carries on bending after he's put it down. So how can that be sleight of hand? Well, Richard, Wiseman, knowing a lot about the power of suggestion, did a study where he showed that if you make the verbal suggestion, after a key has been bent by a pseudo-psychic using sleight of hand, put it down, and if you make the suggestion, look, if you look closely, it's still, it's still bending. 40% of witnesses report they think it carries on bending. It's a very simple demonstration of the power of suggestion. It's shown a very plausible alternative explanation. Okay. Right, so I'd like to move on to you because, um, as you've seen, yes, sure, of course. I mean, that's, that's a, the question is, would you be, uh, I mean, this would be a great opportunity to have some of these techniques that have been used in other areas to show that there is an, another world uh, besides the material world. Would you be willing to subject some of these uh, claims or some of these assertions to these uh, tests and uh, well, it looks like it can, it can be tested? Actually I, actually, I disagree that it can be tested because, uh, as I said in my presentation, uh, we assume that the devil has free will and uh, in, in science you, you demand replication of the data. So if you have the laws of physics, then you can expect the replication because this is like, uh, it is done automatically. Right, because uh, the laws of physics do not have any free will. But if you have uh, free will, then uh, it's, it's hard to get the replication that is actually necessary for science. And uh, to answer your other question is, as I said before, uh, you have the limits of the measurement. And if you don't have uh, proper tools to investigate, uh, then you are not able to, to, to investigate because of lack of research tools. So if something is not material, and uh, measurements in science are based on interaction with matter, then it's not possible uh, at all. It so, is just not possible. So it's essentially a non-falsifiable hypothesis. Yeah. Exactly. That, uh, for example, we have a different... Uh, yeah, but, but the point is that from this, that you will lack uh, the equipment, uh, research tools, you cannot conclude. It is not rational to conclude that something else doesn't exist because we don't have the research tools. So this Why is the question. Why do you assume that it does exist in the first place? There's no evidence to support it. No, I, I showed you my presentation. The, the quotes from different exorcists that you have phenomena during exorcism that you cannot explain within the materialistic, atheistic paradigm. I have quoted. So this, for example, this uh, holy water. So this was a little bit different than uh, what uh, you have demonstrated because the other person that was uh, uh, mentioned uh, by the exorcist didn't know that it was the holy water, but it, it actually, it, it gets, so to speak, you understand the difference? That you don't know that it was the holy water, and he guessed. That's the point. Chances are 50-50. Right? The same, sorry, the, 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 the same was with the languages. The same was with the languages. Please remember what was, uh, what was quote, quoted that a person that normally couldn't speak, couldn't speak uh, Italian, he spoke Italian. So how do we explain this? You so this is the, the real problem. But you made a point about science there that things have to be replicable. Not everything is replicable in science. The poltergeist I talked about is, as an example, I couldn't make it happen again. I couldn't, I couldn't create another poltergeist like that to test. So there are other methods you can use in science, and in this case, showing how the clock worked, which meant taking the clock away and examining it, showing how the television worked, which meant you know, finding out the physics there. Replicability isn't always essential. Finding plausible alternatives and being able to explain it psychologically can do the trick without replicability. Right. Correct. Just well, in experimental science, you normally demand the uh, replication, but to of course, you, you have some observations, and this is what I was uh, talking about, that you should observe. There are so many exorcists, there are so many witnesses, so many cases, and so on, so just uh, collect the data, right? First, first before you just. Could comment on the linguistic claims? I mean, when those kind of claims have been subjected to proper critical scrutiny, it's either found that it's not actually a foreign language at all, I mean, it's a movie glossolalia, uh, 
uh, speaking in tongues where there's no linguistic structure whatsoever, it's just literally babble. Uh, and in other cases, is, you can actually often trace back where they may have picked up bits of Italian, yeah. for example. Exactly. So there are going to be some, there's a lot of questions here, but I'd like to first of all give a chance to the other members of the, uh, the panel to uh, comment on this, on the testability. I mean, you mean, uh, uh, would you like to address that so that we just get a view across the panel? Yes, I would, I would like to uh, say one particular thing uh, that concerns exorcism. According to the church law, an exorcist uh, is not allowed to perform a proper exorcism unless he is morally sure that the possession is real. And to get someone who is critically thinking uh, morally sure that the possession is real would require some proper testing. Do they do such testing? I don't know. Probably <laughs> <laughs> not. Maybe you know. I, I said actually about the criteria, uh, uh, how to how to differentiate between the, the <coughs> mental illness and of course this is not like 100% hundred percent sure it is also the experience of an exorcist, right? So that that's that's, that's the point. So we have two more, two more points. Uh, sorry, I just make a very short comment on this because when I was studying in Rome, uh, a French Jesuit was explaining us this this particular requirement and he made one uh, quite funny comment. He said uh, uh, moral certainty is something else in Paris and something else in South Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can tell you about my experience with testing uh, whether a person is uh, mentally ill, if I may say so, or inverted commas possessed. No matter whether we believe in possession or not, we were asking such questions because the exorcists that we worked with, the priests and exorcists, uh, some of them were actually helpful and ready to cooperate. The problem was that uh, their way of thinking is so much different from yours that it's like two completely different worlds. In a way, it's like, you know, a person who cannot see colors who is to go to a museum and appreciate the beauty of, of pictures which are colorful. That, that's actually the situation. That although we seem to uh, spoil the same language, it was not quite uh, the, the same uh, things that we met. And uh, for them, uh, something which was completely certain and obvious, for us was completely doubtful. And uh, we assumed that there is no assumption, that we don't say we believe or we don't believe, we trust, we don't trust, no. We just ask a simple question, can you help us to find people who would agree to be in the film, because it's necessary, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to screen it for a year publicly. So those people have to agree, and many characters that they met couldn't be on the screen, because they did not agree. So the choice is limited. So this was the first condition. The second was that the priest was to be certain that there is something fishy about this person. Uh, they uh, have a kind of hierarchy of possession. It's not only that somebody is possessed. Sometimes such a person is tormented, sometimes such a person is... There are some other stages. Possession, if I remember correctly, is the last one. It's final. But there is something in the middle, something at the beginning, something closer to the end, and it, it changes. So, uh, to, to be frank and, and no, 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 not cheating, I can tell you that they were not certain, they were quite often uh, suspecting that there is a devil and the devil is doing something naughty, but it was not always clear which stage of possession we are observing. So this is one. The second, that those priests 
Sometimes they were exorcists nominated by the bishop. And this is according to the Catholic Church rules, the right exorcist. But quite often, and there are many people like that among Catholic priests, they act as exorcists because they can exorcise in a smaller way. For us, it also looks like an exorcism and we would call them exorcists. But uh, according to the Roman ritual and all the rules which were set by the Catholic Church, they are not exorcists. They can uh, use prayers without ordering. There is a kind of a subtle difference. Uh, it looks, frankly, exactly the same. And if we don't listen very carefully to their memory, sometimes the exercise is not speaking very loud, so you cannot say uh, what they are doing. And sometimes they use a smart trick. They exercise not saying it openly. It's co called test exorcism. So I am exercising you, for instance, uh, praying, using this prayer, but you don't know about it. And then I, if I am an exorcist, if I work, right? Uh, I know whether you are possessed or mental or whatever. So there are many different situations. It's not clear cut. It's not zero one, right? And uh, when we sh were either shooting material and showing it to our friends, experts, or telling them stories, we also learned something. Uh, I, I was trying not to have any kind of, uh, uh, say, my own opinion. I was asking people who know, right? A psychologist, a psychiatrist, an anthropologist, and so on, not to impose my own judgment. Well, I was moved by all this, but I was not telling them anything else. And for instance, something which was very uh, important and really impressive was that they found that the exorcists, they had their own problems. And quite often, their own mentality, their own psychological dilemma was very clear to a psychiatrist who was watching and telling, oh, he probably has this or that. It is like those psychiatrists now in the US when they judge uh, Trump and they say that he is sort of loony because of this or, or, or that. So we were experiencing this. So to summarize it. We never could actually be certain whether the fact of possession is actually a fact of possession. Because they claim, they, they assume it was this, but most likely it was something in the middle. They were also in the position that they have, had their own problems. And uh, when we actually made our, say, uh, summary, just putting a name uh, of a person, what is the, the illness, what is the stage of possession, and there was such a long list. Uh, we found that uh, there was no success uh, with none of the girls, and there were many, but uh, exorcists were successful twice with men. This is very strange, and I can tell you, uh, they thought those two men were possessed. But later, according to other specialists, we discovered that uh, exorcism is effective if this person is an alcoholic, and it's addiction, and a priest, an exorcist priest, it seems to be sometimes much more effective than a psychiatrist, any kind of treatment that can be applied to the situation. We can explain it in theological terms, if you will, yeah? because it's God's hand, or we can explain it as a kind of very severe therapy, a kind of thing that a normal, say, psychiatrist cannot do. For instance, when you are fastened to, to, to a seat, and you feel like you will be crucified. If you go on drinking, then something happens in your mind. And maybe this is the simple explanation of the situation. But I must say that I witnessed such uh, cases of help that they were effective. 
the only uh, bad side of it that usually uh, one of the chips is replaced by another. So, for instance, mm -hmm. if such a drug addict or alcoholic stops drinking, then he becomes so pious that he has to go to church every day. Mm -hmm. And he believes that if he doesn't, he will come back to his addiction, the previous one. So, this is what I have experienced. Okay, last, last comment. So, I have presented to you my experience. I don't believe in possession. And I think when you work with faith, uh, with uh, power of suggestion or and authority, you will make people feel uh, that they are possessed. But it is not possession, it is only their imagination. And <coughs> that's it. Only imagination. I mean that uh, the bishop, after the case with uh, Annelise in Kern, there was a, there was a case in the, in the court. They are actually somehow they are afraid to nominate uh, the bishop. So this is the first to, the, to nominate the exorcist. And the second is actually the liberal mentality that thinks that the devil is the superstition. So uh, the Catholicism in Germany is very liberal, so so to speak. So uh, this is this is also the reason. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like to ask um, Mr. Cholaski, uh, you've answered this for, for the two men you were in touch with, uh, but as far as the women go, and uh, I think we've, uh, there is a general sense that uh, the situation for the women affected here is fundamentally different. We've seen uh, in the film one person who was a lesbian and two who were unruly teenagers. Have you encountered any women in there who actually had serious mental issues before they were exercised? Well, the problem is that uh, people that I met were usually uh, shown to me because they, they have been already exercised. Because I couldn't foresee who would be exercised. If I look at you, I don't think that any of you would be exercised any time, right? So, I was given just examples of people who already were in touch with entrances. But if you are asking about women, uh, statistically it is uh, proven that most people who exercise are teenage girls or somebody like 20, 20 some. And this is the majority of people who take part in it. Uh, about the Bible, and also by connecting the conversation, the question with uh, what Carmen was saying about existential security or psychological security, you, you say something I don't quite understand. You say that the priest must be morally, absolutely morally sure before performing an exorcism. But I don't quite understand what you mean by morally mm -hmm. sure, because uh, I, I guess the belief is based on a book, which is the Bible, which mm -hmm. is not really quite a moral book. The Bible was a lovely fairy tale uh, book, uh, very comfortable. I think it would make sense to see people rely on that book, but the problem is that the Bible is not uh, really that lovely. So I don't quite understand these parameters of like uh, uh, morality that the priest adopts. That's what I'm I'm afraid I can't help you with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but maybe I will comment on this. So. Uh, it, it means that uh, this, is, this is something like a matter of conscience that results from an experience, from the experience of the exorcist, that he, from his experience, really thinks, is convinced, what, what let's say, convinced that this, uh, this is, uh, that somebody is possessed or tortured, tormented by, by the devil. Yeah, this, this must be a subjective ju uh, judgment because you cannot testify, you cannot measure this in a scientific way. This is what I'm trying to say, I think, all the time. Okay. Uh, sorry? But I, the same, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so actually we've heard a lot about the exorcism side of things, but I was interested actually in what Jacob was doing in your demonstration. I really liked it. 
And what I was really interested in is, is from a mentalist perspective, what is like the most extreme behavior you've ever been able to suggest to someone to do? Like how far can you go down that line of suggestion in terms of getting them to do things? I think if you have enough time and a sensitive person, you can do everything what we saw in the documentary. Um, mm -hmm. You can see with that people are screaming, scratching, real possession. But it is only uh, your mind and your creativity and your imagination. It's not nothing else. No. I was quite struck by you saying that um, honest people. 
I have met a lot of honest people when I used to do a lot of um, studies of mediums and psychics and tarot readers and various other people. I met some out and out frauds, uh, Doris Stokes for example, but very, very, very few. The vast majority of these people genuinely believed what they were doing. Now they're mu much less harmful than what we're talking about today. So it can be harmful doing a, a tarot reading for somebody or looking at a crystal ball and telling them their future so that they kind of give up. Uh, they believe you and give up their own sense of, of what they ought to do. Yeah, it can be harmful, but nothing like as bad as this. But the process, I think, is very similar. Presumably, mm -hmm. these exorcists have been brought up with this um, oppressive religion themselves. They've been, they believe those things genuinely. It's very difficult to get out of it, given all the mean tricks that these religions play. And so I can totally believe they are honest people. They want to be honest people, they want to be good people, and they're stuck in, in the life that's put them this way. So that is no reason for believing that what they say is true. It is a reason for having some sympathy with them, because they've ended up doing these horrible things. And let's hope there's some way to help them to stop doing these horrible things. Uh, hello, my name is Camille, and um, I have just a quite awkward question um, because um, I haven't been from the beginning. Uh, from uh, I haven't heard your lecture about uh, exorcism, and from what I've heard already, there was some evidence that some girl or man guy, I don't know, uh, speak with nails or something like this. And, uh, am I right? But, it was an evidence. Um, I've been to China and really spitting with coins or nails was a kind of street magic. Right. The, 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 there was many people doing this. And I, I know, I know, it, it, it's not a, it's still not an evidence. As, as we have seen uh, recently, uh, we've seen hy uh, hypnosis. <laughs> and it's still it's not an argument that there is no devil possession. It only uh, shows that okay, there are devils, and we can simulate this. So this, this, this I understand. What, what, what I don't understand is why there is a huge religion, it's Catholicism or, or Christianity, and uh, with the, the believing in very powerful gods and, and etc. and very powerful uh, devil that could possess, uh, I don't know, Donald Trump or Donald Trump or Kim Jong Un, and uh, and, and, and yeah, 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 sorry, and, and he and, and he decides to possess some girl in some village, and his own mighty power to uh, uh, expose is okay. I spit and I don't know nails, and, and this is I, I, I sorry, I, I don't want to, because there are lots. I, I don't really want to mock you. I just want to ask: Does religion still need that concept? And all these bad consequences, like uh, we have seen abu abusing this concept. And I, I really like this uh, meme uh, infection term. Are you, are you really reconsidering it with, with having this quality of evidence? But to be fair, I mean, I think Trump may be possessed by the devil. <laughs> Wow, this thing's sweating. <laughs> okay, um, about the people that were being exercised, I think what they were really fighting against was their, for their logic, for their rationality, for their intelligence, to evolve past this virus kind of thinking. So I would fight that too, fight off the gullibility and fight off the credibility, and crit sorry, credulity, blah. <laughs> Strategy to react 
to that. And perhaps if you would come again, we could think of a better strategy to talk to you because this, I think it was not as effective as it could have been. So I have no better idea, but yeah, thank you very much. At least we didn't need to go to a workshop to talk to you. Exorcism 
especially uh, when the church law is not respected, as we saw it also in the film. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I know from my own experience cases, uh, well, not, not exorcism, but a liberation prayer by exorcist, in fact, really helped someone. And uh, as I said, it's really, it's really a difficult topic, and uh, I find it very, very uh, sad when uh, the topic of exorcism is uh, reduced only to the very superstitious uh, part of the church. So thank you. Uh, I think this is a very, this was a very, very special session also for me to lead. So uh, when I was asked to, to lead it, I didn't know what I was letting myself into. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I think there are a number of other questions that I wanted to ask, which I have not asked. I'm not going to ask anybody to answer those questions. Like I think there's one common commonality, despite all the difference, is that I think most of us, whether we are materialists or not, at least think there's a material world where we know that there are many philosophers, postmodern philosophers who dispute that completely and are atheists. So I think there's a difference between being an atheist and being a materialist. There are lots of atheists who are, don't believe that matter exists or that there's a reality out there and things like that. So anyway, so we come to the close and I think we are, um, the, all the speakers have uh, deserved a big hand for coming. Sorry, that's my opinion. Oh yeah, I understand, but I think you didn't understand me. 
the, uh, yeah, because what I, what I said is that uh, uh, that God cre cre created the laws of physics, of biology, and so on. So it is it is it is possible and uh, rational that uh, the evolution took place according to the to the laws. So you don't actually need to claim that God created man and creatures like this because it was through the laws. But but the laws were created by God. So you see that I was I was talking about the two different uh, planes of casuality. So one is in the plane, so according to the laws, yeah, but the laws are like given, we cannot manipulate them. So you see the difference or not? Okay. If God has power over the devil, how can you say the devil has free will at all? The <laughs> Because uh, God gave free will to every intelligent being, right? But the freedom is, 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 is limited. So, what? No, I, I do not understand what you mean. Every human being has free will that is, of course, limited because the freedom of every, uh, of every human is, all, is limited. You cannot, for example, fly. And the same is for the, for the devil. But we, we don't know what is the space of freedom, let's say. But the analogy is the, the, the same. Okay, let's. Mm, okay. Uh, so I have a simple uh, question, but first of all, when I was traveling, when traveling here from Warsaw, I, I walked into the store and I bought, by complete accident, an exorcist. Uh, someone from the Polish audience who won this, uh, I can borrow. Uh, it is uh, focused on the materialization. Uh, and on the page 8, uh, there is a claim uh, which was mentioned in your presentation that um, uh, possessed people can material can materialize uh, crabs. But it's even worse because on page 8 it says uh, he can materialize crabs from anus. Yes. And my my question, I'm pretty skeptical about this, and uh, my question is, has, uh, as you mentioned, it is uh, 21st century, uh, has this been recorded by some, you know, we have, everyone got smartphones, uh, cameras, so, because, uh, I don't know, call me a pervert, but um, I want to watch crafts coming out of somebody's ass, for example. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see your point, but normally during the exorcism there is, uh, you, normally you cannot record exorcism, there is, uh, there is no camera, but in this article probably you have read that there are some, uh, some photographs, uh, right? And one thing about the materialization from scientific point of view, so this is not like uh, the exorcist or uh, I claim or we claim that uh, materialization is out of nothing, this is just uh, some control that the, that the devil has over the matter. So it can be that it is taken from something or there is a control over the matter somehow. But it is not like ex nihilo. My question is, what is your definition of free will? Because as we know, and as uh, Sam Harris says, the idea of free will is useless nowadays. It's just an abstract idea. Describing in the abstract way of, um, uh, the abstract set of behavior and what we call free will not, might not even exist. So what is your definition of free will? Because you did not define it. My, defi my definition is, I think, very simple. That free will means that you can choose uh, what to do, whether you want to do evil or you want to do good things. This is the definition, and this is what you said. This is this is uh, a hypothesis. It is not proof that there is no free will, at least as I know in uh, science.
question? Um, how do we know that a method cannot give existence to itself? Science cannot prove a negative. Like we cannot prove that God does not exist, we can only infer it is unlikely. This is, this is uh, that matter cannot create itself or cannot give existence to, 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 to matter this is an observation because we know from physics that if you have uh, matter nothing like that was observed so matter can change to energy and you can convert matter to other forms but never was observed that uh, matter created another matter it's, it's, it's the, the, it is an observation Uh, let's, let's move on. How will we do it for film? Do we know it? Is there anything God cannot do? If he can do everything, then he's a useless explanation for everything. If he's limited, we might be able to investigate his limitations, and that would be very interesting. Uh, I actually just want to say a big thank you for presenting because it's an incredibly courageous thing to say in front of an audience of people who perhaps have to be able to criticize you more than just a In that regard, I actually have an interesting question, which is actually is it possible that the devil is capable of doing good in uh, an indirect way, you know, through doing harm to one thing, actually has repercussions that cause positive effects in the world around us. Okay, so please, hold on, so we sum up the big country that puts you up. So it means that God chooses what he wants to be. So, and according to the Catholic faith, God wants to be love. So everything that is not, uh, that is not in accordance, is not in agreement with love, of course you can define this, but in accordance with this, then he cannot do it because he doesn't want to do it. Because before he has chosen to do, to, to be love, or to do everything out of love. So that's the explanation. Thanks. Uh, for the moment, now I don't know whether it's God or it's the devil or it's angels intervening here all the time because now we have to change the program again and we have the film now with subtitles, so we won't have the break now, but go ahead straight for the film. The existence of the devil would violate the laws of physics in our universe, but it is possible for other universes to exist in which laws are different and the devil could exist. But it still leaves the problem. How could the devil interact with our universe without violating the laws of physics of our universe? Good point. Uh, so the, the, the assumption here is that, that the devil has uh, some power over the matter, so over the universe. So that's why it's possible to, that the limitation takes place, because it has the power over the body of the, of the man. So this is... Uh, this is, this is uh, I don't know what they answer the question. So he doesn't obey the physical laws because he has a different nature, but he has power over the matter in this universe. So that's why it's possible to leave the body. So this is, you understand? We don't need to share my word, but I hope you understand this or not. That means he violates the physical laws of our universe. No, actually not, because he said, this is with, what is the, with the violation of the, of the laws. I will give you an example. If you, have, if you have a man on a bridge, and then he jumps, he commits suicide, and then you will see that, like, let's say, one meter above the water, he stops. Yeah? So, the explanation, the supernatural explanation, could be that an angel caught him. But let's, but let's, uh, let's think about this. 
Did he violate the gravity? No, because there was another force acting against the gravity, basically. So that's the point. Okay, but uh, yeah, because yeah, because very dense. So I, uh, you, you didn't understand uh, actually what, what I wanted to, to say, because. Uh, what I said about the true religion, this was the logical consequence. So, I said that materialism, so atheism, is a worldview. So this is a belief, this is a philosophical stance. This, so, if this is like this, so that this is uh, a belief, so a belief can be true or not. So, if this is not true, then other belief must be true. One of the worldviews must be true. So then, I logically went further, that it's possible that also God exists, you see? Yeah, the true one, exactly, there are different concepts, but you understand that atheism is a belief, it's not scientific. Because, uh, because, yeah, yeah, evidence, but this is what I said before, that scientific tools, because you look for scientific evidence, so you would like to measure God with your scientific tools. But the problem is that the scientific tools are limited only to matter. So this is the problem of scientists. No, this, this, this is just reasoning. Because, because if you don't see the limits of the research tools and the, the empirical science, then actually you don't know what science is about. Get him. Get him. Burn the witch. <laughs> Stop. What? Stop. Hi. My name is Harry. You said that uh, the devil has. Uh, Sorry, but I can't. I cannot. I cannot hear. You said that the devil has a free will to uh, do harm to humans, and the God stops you from doing that. So you said that God violates free will of the devil. The what? But the God violates the free will of the devil. And how can you be sure that the God doesn't do the same to you? No, this is uh, the answer is the following. So a human being has free will, but uh, we know that we can we can cho we can choose to do different things. But always the freedom of a human being is limited because, for example, you cannot fly, you cannot turn into a dog, or, and so on. So also the, the devil is also limited in, in his uh, free will, in his freedom, right? And then, and then you have this prayer. Prayer means that you ask God to... Not to, to, to violate, to, 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 violate, violate uh, to, to some extent, yes, to some extent, to some extent. But the, but, the, but the same, you could say that uh, violate the free will in human beings because you cannot do anything, everything, right? Yes, yes, but, uh, but, but, but you know, the point is that uh, uh, the devil has more power over us than we have the power over him. So he must be somehow limited. Thank you.